kan gue hatsi Thank him for coming to our rescue, Rasta. I thought she'd come here to see us following the hearing, only to find that we're already departing for Thavnir. From him, he was probably hoping to chew the chat kind of with his former students. Since we're still waiting for your stall and the others, cut now the perfect time to pay him a visit. Care to join me? Settled, the twins will be coming too, assuming Elfino can tear himself away from his new toys. I'll let you rally the troops while I go on ahead to the Phenomenon. Here it is, Phenomenon. I expect you may know of it before. One can hardly miss it. This is the first time you've been here on the official business, correct? Well, most of the space is taken up by expansive auditoriums. It also houses numerous laboratories, testing grounds for experimental magic, and a host of administrative offices and so forth. The center of what would later become the studium, it was established to promote the study of aetherological phenomena. Hence the name. The scope expanded to include every conceivable facet of life, even the universe itself. Since lost track of how many times he has recited that same popular speech, such as his undying love for his old stamping ground. He was in top form back then. August entered studium, graduated with highest honors, magical arts, and theatrology, undisputed champion of the debating chamber. Hold on, you both joined the studium at the same age, yes? And from where I stand, you're equally prodigious and scholarly. I should say you, but Alfredo actually entered half a year before me. Or did I do well enough to graduate with honors? And I am certainly not the student's most notorious master debater. In all respects, have I ever been in this his shadow of nothing else? Just remember that this was where the legend of Ella from the Bayat was kept. I expect everyone to be fully aware of our recent escapades. Hopefully we'll be someone more welcome here, here than we were at the last stand. I know better than anyone the auditorium of student body has for Alephino, and with a bit of luck it might work for a vintage. Though 
there's no time like the present. Let's go. Let's check for Skolak Mon Monty Chang. Better faculty tend to frequent their offices, but unfortunately for us, he's fond of running wherever so ever his whims take him. Mr. Badalsian's granddaughter. This can only mean one thing. An event epoch's shattering proportion is fast approaching. Spread the word. You're looking for the scholar, yes. Knowing him, he could be anywhere. The master, Miss Alioff, should have a better idea. Wander in off the street, perhaps. Wait, don't tell me you're the you're a trainee gleaner, fresh off the guild ship. I'm right, aren't I? Oh, how slow are you? No reputation is nowhere. Uh, allow me to bid you a warm welcome. The search is me. What is the most important thing you'll find in the studio? That's right, books. That's the second most important. But everything else. <laughs> Searchers meet whenever the students are free to use funds or need equipment. They come to us. If we don't have it in our stores, we stand cleaners to find it. I couldn't believe some of the requests we get. I pays that this tongue of giant toad. It's enough to make your hair stand on it. Which is mostly what some of our students are still trying to accomplish, just being a school of magic and all. Find it quite rewarding. Alright. Fair enough. Uh, the only thing I'm interested in gleaning is information about the school. I beg your pardon, you're not a gleaner? This was all in Malibu Reeves, no way. No, David, you ever actually claimed to be one in the first place? No mistake. He was here, but now he's not. I did speak with him shortly before he arrived, though. He said he was on his way to the Maker's Meet. Go back the way you came in, you'll see him on the opposite side of the entrance. Alright. We already left. Best of luck for you. in my current research project. Though he spoke at life, I don't recall him mentioning where he was planning to go next. We parted ways. He went down the corridor, perhaps, to one of the auditoriums. you at an inopportune moment. We wanted to offer our thanks for your kind words in the forum. Well, I could hardly let that Inquisition go unchallenged. I've always believed that curiosity should be nurtured, not stifled. 
Thankfully, a majority of my colleagues agreed. A slender majority, aye, but a majority nonetheless. Had the vote not gone our way, we would be having a very different conversation, if any at all. Though I'd like to think you would have not given up on our cause. I'm told you paid a visit to the Annex afterwards. Yes, that's right. I was hoping to speak with the grandchildren of my dearly departed friends Gallif and Louisois in a less doer setting. But it seems I just missed you. I still can't believe how much you've grown. If only your grandsires could have seen the way you presented yourselves to the Forum. Why, if fair brought a tear to my own eye. You must have the patience of a saint, putting up with this lot and their antics. Never mind Matoya's prize student. Luckily, I know a thing or two about managing unruly younglings. If you ever need advice, don't hesitate to ask. If I may, there is a rather more pressing matter we wish to discuss. What can you tell us of this duty that the Forum must fulfill? Nothing, I'm afraid. Like all humble servants of the Forum, I am sworn to secrecy. Or rather, I couldn't tell you if I tried. Our duty is of the gravest importance. Furthermore, if the particulars were made public, it would incite widespread panic. As such, those entrusted with this duty have been bound by an enchantment, which prevents us from speaking of such matters without the express permission of the Forum. How is that even possible? <laughs> it's been some time since I last gave a lecture. Please, take a seat. We shall begin by reviewing the fundamentals of etherology. The ether, which imbues us with life, can be categorized into three forms. Two are of the incorporeal sort, the soul and the memory. Can anyone tell me the third? Yes, very good. This is the form with which the layman is most familiar. Consumed by even the simplest of daily activities and replenished by the food and drink that sustain us, this form of ether is in constant flux. In contrast, the ether that comprises the soul is rarely subject to dramatic change. The same can be said for memory, as the two are intrinsically linked. Picture the soul as paper, and memories as words written upon it. Now, what would happen if that paper was doused with ink? the same type of ether as comprises the memories. It would blot out everything that was written. Precisely. 
we would be unable to recall the memories, and any activities that depend upon them would be hindered as well. In fact, this exact phenomenon was observed on a vast scale not so long ago. And what might that have been? The seventh umbral calamity. The people of Eorzea vividly recall Bahamut breaking free of the lesser moon and raining hellfire down upon the realm. But no one could seem to remember the events that followed immediately afterwards. Oh yeah, it was Louis Fla. What Louis Fla saved everyone. Indeed. To this day, we have yet to determine whether it was an unintended consequence or a deliberate act. The enchantment which binds me and the rest of the forum is based on a similar principle. And yes. It is a contravention of the Charlene prohibition against the practice of memory manipulation. Only when the new member is inducted and told of our great duty are they subjected to the process. A necessary evil. You have my word that it would never be used to manipulate the populace. I should hope not. But can this enchantment be dispelled and your memories restored? If nine-tenths of our members give their approval, then the process may be reversed. Then, and only then, would we be able to speak freely to others of our sacred duty. Barring that, we must wait until we return to the Ethereal Sea. For there we will be purified, the blots upon our souls washed clean. And our memories drift apart and dissolve, rather defeating the purpose, I suppose. But, there are those memories that are indelibly etched upon our souls, some believe. What happens after that? We are reduced to pure ether, coalesce with that of others, and create souls anew. Alternative schools of thought assert souls remain whole and return to the corporeal world. Reborn into another form. Both theories have their proponents. Personally, I consider each equally probable. Well, I think that's enough education for today. Now that I've given you some food for thought, or rather, an entire banquet. I would remind you that although I'm unable to assist you with certain matters, the resources at my disposal may still be of use to you. I'll arrange for you all to be given the run of Phenomenon. Of course, as associate to our alumni and the students of Baldessian, this privilege is extended to you as well, my friend. Oh, and I suggest you speak with Ki Aliapo. She's well known among the artisans of Charlian and her network of contacts may prove useful in your search for knowledge. I wish you all the best in your pursuits, wheresoever they may take you.
digestive writer has to eat more for food. Well, that's given me much to mull over. I feel as though we're one step closer to understand the frog's true motive and the mysteries of life itself. Good measure. It's funny, I came here with the intent of expressing my gratitude, only to leave more indebted than before. Feeling this friendship and support will be a great boon to us one day. And well, let's head back to the annex, perhaps on the way we could better appoint ourselves with Keila Elioff, as the scholar suggested, while I sh share our findings of Ra. We learned some stuff. While you were away, I received word from our fellow Sarnauts. As expected, the news of rewarding skills was met with much joy. Operations are now underway to bring the leadership of the Grand Company of Eurasia and, and Eastern Alliance together to determine a way forward. Our friends have asked that we bring the skills in position to the Limsa Limsa. Time has come for us to go on the offensive. It's too easy early to, to say for certain, but that does seem to be the way the winds are blowing. After one can think of no reason to oppose such a plan, but let us see what awaits us in Vilbrand. Let's start by getting the scales out of the storage. Give me a hand, would you, Miss Tina? So heavy. Are you not coming with us? As much as I would like to escape the firm's watchful gaze, I have little choice but to stay behind. We're already on ten ice, and if I if I, in my capacity as our official representative, were found to be inserting foreign powers, well, you can imagine how that will help go. I shall remain here and do my utmost to avoid ruffling any more fetters, as I wait a word from Master Matoya and our other allies. Our flock will soon have good news of our own to share. The tide is about to turn. Feel it to lips of the Mensa. Apologies for laying away from Charlotte at such a short notice. Country, we are honored and grateful and pleasantly surprised to be joined such, by such a steam company. It was only right that the discussion be conducted in person. We are locked in a war of attrition, we are forced to struggle to contain the threat posed by the towers. It's only a matter of time before we are overwhelmed. Victory will only be claimed through decisive action, and we have taken the initiative to set the wheels in motion. It's very reassuring to learn we are all in accord then. But when I asked what your plan entails.
hinges entirely on the warning scales and our ability to roll tide is their potential to the fullest. During your time in Shirlian, the Allied nations have been engaged on separate fronts with no end in sight. Making matters worse, a surge in abductions of kobolds, Sahaj and Ixal, and Ananta have given rise to an increasing number of primals as well. The triumph in Red of the Ton has given us a, ch a chance to end for hope. The time has come to free ourselves of this menace. The Zeusarians of Seven Dawn have shown us the way. While the bulk of our forces will continue to hold, to allow for our bay, we will dispatch our finest strike at the enemy's heart and our hold. These brave few will be Isla Il Sabard contingent. To think such progress has been made in so short a span. Its objectives are twofold. The first is to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. As previously reported, countless Imperial soldiers and civilians have been tampered. Around their free will, they serve to tell off for every whim without question. They too are victims. It is our duty to deliver them from their suffering, not for the strategic or political gain, but because it is the right thing to do. Do not pass that we set aside the decades of conflict and conquest that we simply choose to forgive and forget. I only ask that in choosing so to, to remember we do not also forsake our compassion and morality. For without that, we can be no reconciliation, only death without end. Aye, and that we can all agree. Our section of him is a colossal tower that Tinker and Yonji observed in the capital. But purpose remains unclear, there's reason to believe the smaller spires are summarily a precursor of what's yet to come. Till the Tower of Zod was toppled, would fail to make any headway. Do the same could be said of the Telophoroi. We're certainly in a rush to press further into our lands. I'd wager the spire's primary purpose is to divide and, and keep us occupied while they work towards our annihilation. This would appear to be substantiated by Yostrola's analysis of the towers and influence on aetherial currents. Based on her observation inside the towers of the spires siphon aether from the land, consuming it to maintain their form. However, they draw forth far more than it is required for this task alone. The excess of aether remains unaccounted for, but we can be sure it is not being harnessed for our benefit. It would surprise me, at least, if it is being redirected to a larger spire in the capital. There's a logic of that, regardless, once we have uncovered the truth. We'll bring their scales, schemes crashing down, along with their infernal towers. That's all we well and good. What would you have us do? Seems more than handling over the scales and being on our way. I want you and your scales to join the East Labard contingent. It's there is an official request from both the Grand Company of Urza and the Eastern Alliance. Do you accept? Perhaps you shouldn't be the one to answer that. For the people of Garlemald. It's for revenge, for honor and glory. Put it better myself. Shtola and Tancred, you and Jay have already pledged your support and are on your way to meet the rest of the contingent. Your positive view would come to the same decision as they did. Luckily for all involved, your prediction was correct. So you have delivered the warning scales to Alamika, condition will embark on its journey to Islamar. The one and the Ramrak are overseeing preparations, so I suggest you make yourselves known upon arrival. Pack warm clothing, furs, and the like, all the cold will do before the tall off one. So much as strong steel. This rest will keep the enemy busy. Now go, it's safe.
Oh, the Wanderers return. You've been busy. Lunging up down a tower and producing the keys to destroying the rest of them. You should be proud. Those learning skills of yours are what's made this whole venture possible. You and Lord Emmerich be leading the contingent then? Gribbly, you know, our role is to organize the various delegations into a cohesive unit. Once we have seen you all off, it's back to our prospective posts. We dare not neglect our duties for too long. We'll start defensive for forces fall into disarray. And just between us, there was a fair amount of opposition to the formation of the Yaslabar contingent. Your suggestion that we send out some of our finest troops behind the enemy lines to under aid until the Guardians has made me rather unpopular in certain quarters. Can't please them all. Aside from that, though, I do my best. To be told, I'd much rather be at her your side charging to the fray. I said battles on my own to fight. Her words may serve the, me better than any blade. I hate to say, but let her own struggles may remain. For the time being, the best we can offer you is the peace of mind from knowing yours as safe in your hands. As you fight the good fight in Islapar, and I and other commanders will do what we can to convince the naysayers that our cause is just. Thank you, both of you. We meet again. Oh, Gaius. Much has occurred since we parted ways in your relit. When I gather the protective talismans you obtained led to the formation of this expeditory force. Your contribution on this occasion is but a minor one. Information I have shared with Maxima for the sake of the people of Arvamal, may the bet fates be on your side. So you're not coming with us? Strange, I thought you'd have a stake in this. I do, to tell off where I have laid waste in my own life and slay my people. But though every moat of my being cries for vengeance, I cannot be the one to let my presence alone. The entire mission to me. We stand a curious accuser murdering the Emperor of Arms, plunging the law into chaos. If I had to travel as a part of it would give my countrymen ample cause to question our motive. Conversely, those who believe to be innocent may instead to celebrate the return of a former, look at us and attempt to raise me to the position of leadership. Further destabilizing the major region and complicating the contingent's mission. If he is here, well, it would only hinder your efforts. I doubt they'll be pleased to see the champion of yours on Carlin's soil. I have a fair point, but so long as you refrain from announcing your rival to all the century, the average person would have no inkling as to your identity. Though your titles and deeds are a common knowledge, only a select crew will recognize you on sight. Perhaps one day, they will learn the word of light is not a demon to be feared. Person does it again. They'll learn one day. Lights of Gaius matter to me, as I said, it was soon to go on your guide. Do I may have defected for political reasons? My love for Grubmall endures. I will stop at nothing to protect it. Also, I ask you to escort your friends inside.
by the Twelve. Glad you could join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. As you can imagine, our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. It is a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals assembled for a single purpose. We fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzabad contingent. Indeed, which is why I am glad to find myself in the company of many trusted comrades, yourselves included. Lucia! I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. For the good of all nations, not least my former homeland, I am determined to see this mission through to its end. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. I have faith that if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. Everyone! If I may have your attention. I just realized they're the uh, job, the job quest uh, NPCs, right? They're all the job quest NPCs from the different jobs that you have to do. They're the one that teach you the new skills. I just noticed that. Might I ask you to speak first? Yeah, yeah. That's the the person. Uh, that's the Pajal from my uh, white mage job. Yeah, that's the Pajal from the white if mage. If I must. Job. Uh, yeah, I remember him. I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation. Here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer. We shall provide support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Of course, with an experienced white mage such as yourself accompanying us as well, those requiring more involved treatment will be in safe hands. Raya O sends her regards, by the oh way. Oh my god, I love this. I love that they have a specific dialogue, depending on your your job class. Because I'm a white mage, and he's a white mage, and he's part of the white mage job class quests, right? Oh my god, this is just epic. This is just epic. They bring back all of the job quests class NPCs to help you that help you fight man that, that this is epic that's you know, the only class I've leveled was white mage too suppose I'd better say my pace oh sickert wait I know you the name sickard in case you've forgotten truth be told I'd rather you had forgotten any road, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason, he picked me. Of course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners, and my reputation's taken enough of a key haul in as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you gotta trust in the commander of your ship. So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. 
Give them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind. But we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. Well, you're certainly raring to go. But then again, so are we. The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Eldin's behest. If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. That's where we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarrapin and I will be leading from the front. It's been some time since I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya, the Avatar of Destruction. <laughs> With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits us. And then we might finally get a chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, let's give it our all. As for Ishgard, we Temple Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace and welfare of our allies. The bitter cold of Garlemald is a formidable enemy in of itself. Our experience fighting in ice and snow will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do all in my power to provide you with the leadership and guidance you require. The four high houses, House Hylinart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature together with the smiths of Limpsa Lumitsa. There is another awaiting introduction. Lord Emonelaine? Ah, yes. Uh, Emonelaine de Fortor, at your service. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your twinkle-toed gentleman of light. Let's see your fancy footwork, Mia. Be all that stands between us and certain doom. May your grace, graceful prancing lead the way to victory. Huzzah! I cannot wait to regale on a roi with my tales of daring do. I believe that concludes introductions for the Grand Company of Eorzea. Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Would that be the Shinobi of Doma? Actually, they've been tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Out of my way, you preening fool! Forgive us for coming late. We are the delegates of the Eastern Alliance. Cyrena, and you've brought company. For battle and blood we come, as the step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Doma. 
only to find them beyond our reach. But now our thirst for slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! Sadu Hatun, no. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Warriors of the Steppe, we've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are... Members of the Dalmascan Resistance Group, Lente's Tears. And the Bosnian Resistance. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage, and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities. Which is fortuitous, since Garlemald's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. Dalmasca, Bosnia, Alamigo. All lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal is to aid the victims of the Tilophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. And they are victims, make no mistake. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. But after seeing what we've seen, fighting and working against and with Garleans, there's no denying the simple truth. They're just people. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. For Dola who once swore herself to Garlemald, has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Imperial Defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Gaius Bloody Balesar himself is working to help rebuild Whirlit, a nation he once conquered. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. It won't be easy. But we're all determined to make this world a better place. What lingering concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Then we are in accord. Now, let us review our strategy. To reach the Garlean capital in northern Ilsabad, we must cross the central mountain range. Fortunately, Garland Ironworks can provide aerial transport, sparing us this most treacherous part of our journey. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our contingent is an area between the range and the capital, the Magna Glacius. From there, we must travel the rest of the way on foot. We will also need to bring the airships with us to ensure we can withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in snow, we should be able to make use of local roads and shipping facilities. The vast ice field will afford us an unobstructed view of the surrounding area. On the other hand, it will also allow others to easily spot us, so it is imperative that we only make camp in positions where we can easily defend ourselves. And the airships, which must be kept safe at all costs. We cannot account for every possibility, so we must be prepared to think on our feet. We will be tested, sorely tested, I expect. But for our homes and for our people, and a people not our own but in need, we will succeed. 
Spare no effort in your preparations. Once we depart, there is no turning back. Things in the reckon they'll be worth a gill or two when this is all over. We'll hold on to them for now. One more thing, I know that what you all think we didn't we didn't descend ends are instead. Regard the future, here I am. Can't say they haven't got the sense of humor. But some of you may be wondering what good is a part in the hard land. Let's sail. How do they say it goes on the airship? We are to keep them close all the time, yes? I will see that no one misplaces theirs. And before I forget, I have a message from Kian. Distant lands in this time is a strife. Together stand, together fight. In darkness shines the light of life. Who have done his words justice, Domo, like much of author, has been plagued by the towers. Yet while he could not be here, he wished to express his shared conviction. Staff in the Eastern Alliance will repay their efforts by ending this war. That is a set of warding scales, but I, not that I would know what they look like.
Look at these, even the layman like me can tell they're busting the fades are all the better for to fend off the tempering waves. Is that the right turn? Yeah, we're gonna go to Carl Mold. Let's go. some advice for me. You have been told by many to wear the, the goal of a star. And I cannot stress you know, that this is no token warning. It's just your specifically made farming temperatures for the same yoke instead. find something my liking. Hmm. Is that a cry for the signs in need of a tailor to hear? Oh, Tataru. But, but, but how? Mwahaha, <laughs> how my ways? Oh yes indeed. You thought you could sneak off to Estabar without telling me? Huh, nothing escapes my notice. Now you will wear these garments I made for you, whether you like it or not. You never cease to amaze. Why do you need a new outfit as well? Wait, are you coming with us? Why well, no, of course not, silly. It's all in the name of fashion, rather the pursuit of the highest quality fashion. So that's how can I expect others to wear my creations if I've never worn them myself? I I did have one thing to share. Armus and Blue Ar Arkmus and Blue Midwida have finally returned on assignments in faraway lands. We'll be staying at Rising Stones for a while to keep an eye on events throughout the Orza. Since they'll be running things back at the headquarters, I was wondering if I could lend a hand in Charlie. Well, why not? You can keep Corral Company in battle at the Sion Annex. Yes, I'd love to have you there. And I heard uh, Evermost and Blue Dad did a fine job carrying on in our stead while we were lying comatose. With them in Charter Rising Stone, we have nothing to, wor we have nothing to worry about. Also, while at Covenant, you won't be collapsing again. If anything similar to Strasses were to happen, I'll be well positioned to do something about it. Anyway, I've got a few things to take care of, then I'll make my way to Charlian. I really do hope these new clothes are enough to keep you warm in your Almond.
here he is. It's going to be a duty, isn't it? Right. Let's do this. Call for battle. Let's go. Ilsebad, divided in twain by a vast mountain range. Those who would traverse its jagged peaks face peril at every step. But why go by foot when one can simply fly? On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, in the frozen wastes of the Magna Glacius. The winds howl in icy protest, as if to warn against further trespass. Word from Thancred's reconnaissance party. They have sighted a detachment of heavily armed Imperials. Survivors of the Civil War, perhaps. Perhaps, but there is more to it than that. Maxima reports that they are led by Vergilia, legatus of the Third Legion, which comprises the bulk of their number. However, they are also joined by several members of the First. From what I recall, the Third Legion fought for Nerva in the War of Succession following Varus' death. The First, on the other hand, were under the direct command of the Emperor and rejected Nerva's claim to the throne. These legions were enemies. Indeed. In fact, our sources claim that it was a conflict between them that sparked the Civil War. Yet now, these former foes cooperate to defend a ruined Garlemald from invasion. Then it is all but certain they have been tempered. So, what's the plan? If me and my crew is out reaving, we charge straight in, no messing about. But that ain't what we're here for. Quite right. Soldiers or no, they are people of Garlemald, the very ones we have come to aid. Direct confrontation is unavoidable. Nevertheless, we must make every effort to limit casualties on both sides. Rather than kill them, I would remove them from the field. How so? Savage beatings, disarmament and imprisonment? Not impossible, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. Having observed the opposition, I imagine Thancred had something to suggest? He did. He and the other scouts have already infiltrated a supply depot some distance beyond the Imperial Detachment's current position. Stored within is a stockpile of Magitek armaments, and once we give the signal, Thancred's team will destroy them all. In so doing, we will deprive frontline troops of materiel and likely force the detachment to send men to investigate.
divide and conquer. Not a bad idea. Once the scouts have finished their preparations, we will split into two groups. The first will form the vanguard, while the other brings up the rear with our supplies. As for the Scions, I ask that you lend your assistance where you deem it needed most. I would prefer, however, that you accompany the rear guard and be prepared to join the van at a moment's notice. Kept in reserve as our trump card, so to speak. Your proposal was well received. More specifically, they asked that we destroy the Imperials' toys in as spectacular a fashion as possible. The Stola always did have a flair for the dramatic. She's not an easy woman to please, but I shall do my best to satisfy her thirst for fireworks. All right, once more for my peace of mind. Our first objective will be to rig the enemy's Magitek with explosives. After we've withdrawn to a safe distance, we'll detonate them remotely. Our second will be to issue a deactivation command to the automated units via the control terminal. If our calculations are correct, this signal should reach those deployed on the front line, giving our friends a much-needed upper hand. A blizzard will help us stay hidden, so let's aim to get in and out before it passes. Trust in the plan, and we should all live to see tomorrow. In the meantime, I will relay messages back and forth as the situation unfolds. You'll forgive me if I ask again, but are you certain you wish to play the lone wolf? Wouldn't have it any other way. Call it foolish and reckless if you like, but I'll get the job done. I always do. Very well. I wish you the best of luck. It is a stealth mission. Okay, that's going to be interesting.
Keep your wits about you. It's time. We only have one shot at this, so let's make it count. a silent takedown on you. Oh, I have to use... Oh, I have to use Swift Ascension. Seven hells. Can I? If I can't use that, can I use that on the slasher? Nope. Damn. Oh. Okay, so I can't do anything to the slasher. I should have mentioned that. 
I cannot disable the slashers that I'm being swatted. This is Thancred. The explosives are in place. Very good. All is proceeding as planned. Head to the control terminal. It should be to the northwest. Understood. Have the others wait at the rendezvous point. Time it with slasher. Don't have the slashers because I can't disable the slashers. I learned that the hard way. That's why my trend level is at 59 right now. Just a slasher that's bothering me.
That was a fun stealth mission. I like that. I like stealth missions like that. You are returned, and none the worse for wear, to my considerable relief. What news from our comrades? They stand at the ready. Excellent. Then let the fireworks begin. The blizzard's beginning to clear. The vanguard should be engaging the Imperials any moment now. If they haven't already. Ishtola and the others are with them, so I'm sure they'll be all right, but... <gasps> Wait! Something's coming! Looks like we ain't the only ones who sent out scouts. Keep them away from the carriages! We lose those, and we're as good as dead! Brief respite, but stay alert. Keep the carriages safe. Display, but the other carriages are still in danger. Go on ahead. We'll hold the line. We're the only ones still struggling. Time we put our backs into it then. I've been itching for a good slap.
We're fine. I'm ready for more. Hear that? Get to the front and turn the tide. Removed from the field was not a euphemism for enthusiastically murder. It's nothing that won't heal in time. The trouble is, their tempering has made them utterly fearless. Subduing them would be easier if they had the capacity to submit in the first place. Well, this is the path our young charges would have us walk, and that we all agreed to follow. You knew it would be hard, yet still you pledged your lance, did you not? That I did. the others take her down. There's no end to them! I was wondering when you'd turn up. There's no stopping us now. Come on. Let's show them what we're made of.
before the sun! Again, to the death! Sadu Hatun! That was the last of them. The day is ours, thanks to your timely arrival. What of the supply caravan? Hmm. Outmaneuvered, but not outmatched. Good. Let us take the Imperials into custody and rejoin our comrades. And soon we shall arrive at the capital. So cold and unforgiving, thus spoke Empress Solace as he gazed upon his barren domain. Eight hundred years it had been since the Garleans first set foot here. Bested by the Kavosi, after centuries of war and driven from fertile southern pastures into the blasted northern wastes. In that garden of desolation, they clung to one another for warmth, freezing, hungry, desperate, hated. The Chosen Forsaken. In the year 1513 of the Sixth Astral Era, a young Legatus named Sola single-handedly sparked the Magitech Revolution. How did he conceive the machina that feed on Ceruleum? Once a common, soft-spoken soldier, how had he so quickly ascended through the ranks? Like so many others, those who knew the truth are gone. Taking in the capital with his eyes for the first time, I recall thinking to myself, far colder on the earth than in the heavens. Yes, far colder indeed, bitterly so. Slabard, Garlemald. 
everything's just destroyed. Not so much as a whisper. The roads leading beyond the city walls would have been used less in recent years. Nevertheless, this was one of the most important gateways into the capital. A buzz day and night with activity, aye. Merchants passing through the checkpoint, many of them stopping at the local hostelries. Surely they cannot all have been tempered. We can consider the question after we have made camp. If we spend any longer outside, we may well freeze to death where we stand. The tempered Imperials, too. This will be our temporary base of operations. Secure shelter for ourselves and the injured, and dispatch scouts to survey the surrounding area. If we're planning on staying here a while, we ought to give this place a proper name. Hmm. Well, the constant sound of ice cracking underfoot makes me think of broken glass. An apt name, perhaps. But enough of this. To work, everyone. We have the big giant tower in the distance. Yeah, this is epic. This is pretty epic. That's 28, right? So we can just come back here anytime. I like this place. I, li I like this. But it's pretty snowy. Pretty snowy. Next time on Final Fantasy 14. Yeah.